The feel is real. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. We got fanatical twice in a row, dang oh, how the tables have turned, or <laughs> something like that. Uh, this is the Reaper 4 bundle, which is looking pretty sweet, a lot sweeper than the, a lot sweeter rather, than the previous Reaper bundles that we had. So, uh, let's go ahead, jump in, take a look at the games, first things first. Game number one, The Texorcist. Game number two, Gorguns and Cannoli 2. Game number three, The Technomancer. Game number four, Kingdom Under Fire 2, Basic Edition, which is actually interesting. It was removed from the bundle in Asia. So if you are getting this bundle and you live in an Asian country, then you won't have access to this title. Luckily, the price did scale down, so Asian countries will be paying $4.49, where everybody else would be paying $4.99. But you don't get Kingdom Under Fire 2. Uh, but it's not really that big of a loss if you want me to <laughs> be completely honest. Anyways, game number five, we've got Beholder 2. Game number six, ooh, Redout Enhanced Edition. Game number seven, Rain World. Game number eight, Do Not Feed the Monkeys. Game number nine, Shadwin. And game number ten, Syndrome. So there are some definite winners and losers, depending on your tastes, but... Honestly, I think that there is something here for everybody. I think it's a really well-rounded bundle, and I mean, for 50 cents each, these games are pretty great. There are some that don't stack up, but we'll get to those when we get to those, so let's not delay any longer, because I've got a lot to say, and we will jump in and look at each of these games individually. The Texorcist, a bullet hell that was lovingly raped by a typing game. Yes, you heard me right. And also, it is just so brutal. As I've mentioned before, Head Up Games, which made The Texorcist, was pretty involved with this channel at one point. I did end up playing The Texorcist when it was in beta, although I didn't make a vid on it because I just couldn't get my shit together. Imagine, if you will, typing, narrating, and playing a bullet hell all at the same time. Any YouTuber who can do that without resorting to post commentary has already reached fucking ascension. You might know by now that I adore brutal games, and this is definitely among the brutalest ones out there. And it came in a completely unexpected form and fashion. This game has a big focus on boss fights, similar to Cuphead, and each of the bosses feel super different. They each have like five or six different phases, and some of them will do things that you might expect in a bullet hell, like laying some toxic puke on the floor to avoid in addition to the bullets, while others will twist up the typing side by like turning letters upside down or lighting your Bible on fire to delete some of the letters. This is just an amazing mashup of two genres that nobody could have ever predicted. I liked it in the beta and it has only gotten better with time. Definitely a beautiful thing to see in this bundle. Gorguns and Cannoli 2! Good god, I thought the first game was good. I mean, I didn't give it the most glowing review ever when we talked about it in the Fanatical All-Stars multiplayer bundle, but I did say that it was pretty good. Well, the second iteration turned things up to 11 in my book. The humor, the gore, the graphics, even the music and the sound work, literally everything about this game feels highly improved. It's like Metal Slug for mob enforcers. Just as twitchy and replayable and absolutely amazing with friends. Gorguns and Cannoli 2 has a really different feel when compared to the first game, which I find interesting. The first game was more slow and methodical, and you had to rely a lot more on good timing and crowd control, whereas Gorguns and Cannoli 2 packs in movement abilities that allow you to zip in and out of the crowds, and bullets are fucking flying everywhere, so you have to move and jump a lot more. It's hard to say which one I really like more. The first game felt slightly less forgiving, but the action just wasn't up to par. The second version packs in the action, but feels a bit too lenient. Don't get me wrong, it's still a really good game, but I would like to see it tweak just a little bit. Maybe some difficulty options to up the ante. The Technomancer. If you're looking for a game that is significantly longer than the 3 to 5 hour playtime of our previous two entries, well, you definitely found it. This title clocks in at more than 20 hours, which is, uh, significant. There are three fighting styles to choose from, and you'll definitely find the time to experiment with each and every one. 
Luckily, fighting feels really nice no matter which style you pick. And the graphics, oh, they're damn near AAA quality. So, what's the deal with this game having mixed reviews? Well, I think because the graphics are so up to snuff, people might forget that this isn't a AAA title. The voice acting ranges from competent to terrible. The sound work is just decent. But the biggest trespass, and what I think the main problem with the game is, is probably that the world itself is just too tiny, and enemies respawn basically instantly. You'll be backtracking one way, and then the other, fighting the same enemies both ways. While the combat is decently fun, this is really a turnoff, and it transforms combat from a thrilling experience into one of those, ugh, here we go again things, which it really shouldn't be. It's still a fairly fun title, I just feel like it made a few missteps that drag it down into the mixed review scores. Personally, I still like it. It's at least as much fun as The Surge, which is a game that we haven't talked about, but trust me when I say that the Technomancer's combat puts The Surge's combat to shame. Kingdom Under Fire 2 Basic Edition This bundle has quite a few mashup games. First, the Texorcist mashed up bullet hells and typing games, and now we've got Kingdom Under Fire 2 attempting to smash together RTS and MMORPGs? Okay. Well, I say attempting because, well, it doesn't really seem to be going well. The game is loaded down with microtransactions, and the irony of that is there isn't really an active player base to speak of. So it doesn't matter much that it's only the basic edition being shoved into this bundle because, like, what are you going to do with those revive coupons and premium currency? Use them to beat up the AI even harder? <laughs> this game is an absolute joke. It might have been worth playing if it could maintain an active player base, but try as I might, there was not a single match to be found. Playing against the computer turned out to be an absolute snooze. Although taking direct control and wading into the fray as a commander seemed to redeem things, if only slightly. If you've played this game with actual people, I would like to know your experience. Was it good? Was it bad? Because going against the AI, it basically just seems bad. <laughs> I can think of quite a few mashup games that I'd like to see thrown into this bundle in the place of Kingdom Under Fire. We've got, like, Natural Selection was kind of an RTS FPS. So was Nuclear Dawn. Both of those titles are mwah, just primo. And yes, they are multiplayer only. The difference is that they're actually really super awesome, and that's why they've been able to retain a player base. As gamers, we can't always describe what we like, but we know what we like, and I don't like Kingdom Under Fire 2. I think a lot of other people agree with me because it is a ghost town. And I think even with the infusion of players offered by this bundle, it's it's probably going to stay that way. Beholder 2! While Gore Guns and Cannoli 2 managed to outdo the first iteration, I really don't think that Beholder 2 managed the same feat. Beholder 2 will take you inside the Ministry, and you'll definitely get more of the dystopia, but with a much smaller serving of moral quandary. And for me, that's where the real meat of the first game was. Forming relationships with tenants and being forced to betray them in one way or another was like a high-wire balancing act that just kept me riveted through the whole thing. Beholder 2 allows you to choose between being good or evil, but it doesn't really feel like it shows you the other side or punishes you at any point for the decisions that you make. It's a relatively shallow experience that's pretty easy to just waltz through. If you're even halfway competent, then you will ascend the ranks of this totalitarian monster government without fail. To keep things engaging, there is a much more fleshed out story with some interesting characters to meet along the way. I think the question of which game is better largely comes down to personal preference. They're both extremely competent games, but I definitely identify more with being a citizen that is being tossed around by an authoritarian government than I do in becoming a cog in the phallus kind of machine. Not a bad game, but I don't think it stacks up to its predecessor personally. Red Out Enhanced Edition Remember when I was covering all those racing game bundles last month? And for each one of those I spoke a lot about arcade racers, versus, like, racing simulators. Well, looking at Red Out, you definitely think that it leans into the arcade side of things, but that assumption would be completely incorrect. Okay, yes, you are racing in a spaceship-like pod at inhuman speeds, 
But when you hit that first turn or loop, and the game instructs you to use the right stick to lean into it, you might realize what you're in for. And if you don't follow those instructions, then the bottom of your ship will start to scrape along the loop or part of the turn, and then you take enough damage and you explode. Indeed, despite the looks, this is a hardcore racing sim. This is F-Zero for a new generation. This is Wipeout on crack. It looks beautiful, plays like an absolute dream. I've played games that told me that I was going this or that speed, but Redout is the only game that really made me feel like I was racing at actual supersonic speeds. The feel is real. <laughs> I have this one on the Switch as well, and just the fact that I thought it was worth double dipping on a racing game nonetheless should speak volumes about what an amazing experience it is. I'm fucking terrible at it, I must admit, but those moments when I'm not actively exploding just feel so fantastic. Even if you don't like racing games, definitely at least give this one a try and see if it clicks for you. Rain World. I've sung the praises of Rain World before. It was also in that fanatical all-star multiplayer bundle along with Gore Guns and Cannoli 1. And it was right next to Cave Blazers as the top tier pick of that bundle. I love Rain World. And granted, it does have a lot more competition for the top slot in this bundle, but it still manages to hold its own. This platformer, Metroidvania, just oozes atmosphere. Get it? Ooze because you're a slug cat? Never mind. The world feels more alive than any other video game that I've ever played. It's astonishing how they got every enemy and environment to just feel completely unscripted. You can play it with a friend, but even if you're a lonely boy like me, this game is still absolutely worth experiencing. It is a tough game, borderline frustrating at times, but the sense of victory when you overcome even the tiniest obstacle is exactly the reason that I play video games. The unpredictable nature and overwhelming atmosphere of Rain World are enough to knock basically any horror game right on its ass. And they weren't even trying to make a horror game! <laughs> oh my god. If you missed this game the first go around, then definitely do not make that mistake again. And if you've already got it, gift this masterpiece to a friend. They will thank you. It is so much better than Bundle Fodder, but we are so blessed to get this amazing game at such a great price. Do not feed the monkeys. I've seen this game in a few bundles before, but never really forced myself to sit down and actually play it until it popped up in Bundle Banter. I'm pretty sure Do Not Feed the Monkeys is a time machine. I have never felt four hours fly by faster. There's just such a fine balance that it never felt like I was lacking something to do. Check who's at the door, watch the cameras, balance your health and energy, do not feed the monkeys, or do. I'm gonna leave that up to your discretion. I'm embarrassed at myself for letting this gem sit untouched for so ungodly long. This game is not only a blast to play, it also manages to be a statement piece that will make you exceedingly uncomfortable with what it has to say. I'm not a huge fan of games that also strive to be pieces of art, but I think that's just because the vast majority of those games aren't fun. And that's not the case at all for Do Not Feed the Monkeys. It's so unique and so interesting that I will absolutely be trying a new strategy for my second go around in order to see a different ending. What a fantastic title. Do not feed the monkeys, I'm sorry I slept on you for so long. I was wrong. This game is great. Shadwin. Third person stealth game that feels a bit too easy. You can rewind time, climb on basically fucking anything, and are basically invisible when you aren't actively stabbing someone. Any stealth game that has an oh no button that can undo all your fuck ups is just bound to be super easy. The one rub is a little girl that just follows you around everywhere and passes judgment for no reason. But this partner isn't that much of an impediment, and so this game ends up feeling like Babby's first stealth title. Even for 50 cents, I don't like it too much. Art assets are reused ad nauseum, from the environments to the enemies, and it just all kind of starts to blur together. The story and the voice acting were enough to keep me pushing through, but only barely. There are multiple different endings that you can achieve, but I don't think I'm interested in another trek through Shadwin. Right next to Kingdom Under Fire 2, I'd say that Shadwin is on the bottom rung of this bundle. 
It might be worth playing through for 50 cents. I mean, it's 50 cents, but the lack of risk involved in this game means that no matter what, it doesn't feel very rewarding, even despite the fairly compelling story. I think it speaks pretty well for this bundle that this is on the bottom rung, however, because I have played games that are much worse than this, but as far as this bundle goes, eh, this one fell kind of short for me. Our final game is Syndrome, another horror game set on the space station, hooray! <laughs> Let me begin by saying that System Shock 3 and Dead Space and Alien Isolation 2 have all done this exact thing significantly better. But you probably won't snag those for 50 cents anytime soon, so let's scale down our expectations. Overall, Syndrome does a decent job at setting its mood. I was gonna say setting the atmosphere, but there ain't no atmosphere because you had space. <laughs> Anyways, it does set a mood, but it doesn't manage to maintain it for long simply because of the inordinate amount of backtracking that this game will force upon you. The first time wandering a certain corridor, I was petrified at what might pop out, but once you've tread the same ground four or five times, like, how much suspense can possibly be left? But you better believe that these devs are gonna try and squeeze every last drop out of this title. The endless fetch quests in the last quarter of the game are absolute proof of that. It's a decent indie title for 50 cents, but even a super low price point isn't any sort of excuse for not being able to rebind keys! The flashlight is on C! Nothing is bound to F! What the fuck? I can't. That's it. That's it. I'm done. Come on. Goodbye, girl world. <sighs> So, what do I think of this bundle? It's fucking killer. <laughs> it really is an awesome deal. I think that you should pick it up. If you do pick it up, please use my affiliate link in the description. I would appreciate that so very much. As far as what is in the top tier of this bundle, Do Not Feed the Monkeys, The Texasist, Rain World, Gorguns and Cannoli. Really, really awesome. I I'll put Red out in there too. In the middle, we have Beholder 2 and... The Technomancer, and then bringing up the rear, we have uh, Shadwin Syndrome and Kingdom Under Fire 2. Kingdom Under Fire 2, definitely the, the bottom tier. We don't want to talk about this one anymore. I'm glad it was removed from the Asian version of this bundle. I thought it was removed from the bundle entirely, but that was too good to be true. And I was really quite insulted because I was like, did I really play this piece of shit for nothing? <laughs> and then I found out that it was still there for everybody else, and it's just my region. Nobody knows why it was removed from my region, but I ain't complaining. So yeah, Rain World I knew is going to be great. Do not feed the monkeys. What a surprise. Totally came out of left field. The Texture says, I'm kind of sad to see it in the bundle because it, it's a legitimately good game. I think it should have performed well enough by itself to, to never be bundle fodder, but apparently that's not the case. Red Out has been out for a very long time, so I'm... Not exactly surprised to see it here, but it's definitely a welcome addition if you haven't played it before. We haven't had a new F-Zero game in so long, and this game easily scratches that itch quite nicely. But yeah, for $5 you're getting 5 great games, 2 meh games, and 3 kind of shit games. I think that's a, I think that's a really good deal. <laughs> Even if it was just $5 for Texas, Gore Guns, and Cannoli 2, Red Out, Rain World, Do Not Feed the Monkeys, I would still go for this bundle. But currently it just has some bonus crap thrown in, so I highly suggest that you pick it up if you haven't already. It is quite tasty. Do let me know what you guys decide to do with it in the comments. And I also hope that you will like and subscribe if you haven't already. That is always massively appreciated. Helps the channel to grow. I also hope that you'll check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, and Patreon. And as always a big shout out to my current patrons, Jessen Lol. Austin Lubitkin, Robert Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radamisisco, Damon Darkstar, and the OG, Nico the Legend. Big shouts out to you guys for helping me live the dream, and big shouts out to everybody else for listening along with me today. I definitely slammed this bundle out like as fast as I could. <laughs> Basically my entire weekend was just fiddling with video games, which is, is totally the life, but 
Now I got some real work to attend to, so I'm gonna get to that. But uh, Humble has some stuff going. They got that Warhammer bundle still hanging about. I'm kind of 50-50 on doing it, but uh, if you guys let me know that you want to see it, then I will hop too, because I'm here to please, and I just want to be loved. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for loving me. Anyways, this has been Bundle Banter, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one, whatever we decide to do next. And I hope that you join me for it. So until then, friends, bye-bye.